Never before has every dumb idea for the Persona series been consolidated into a single series of images. <laughs> this is an incredible list. This is like every stupid complaint or like suggestion from brilliant amateur game designers you've ever heard in your life compiled into one list. It's incredible. Like I've seen all, yeah. I've seen almost all of these things before. And then I have seen most of them. Some of them are new and stupid in exciting new ways. All right. All right. Let's start off with the strongest uh complaint that we usually see. They they're coming right off the fucking bat, ready to go. Um an option to choose between a male or female character as the main protagonist. Also, I've noticed they have it like Certain things are in green, and certain things are blue, and some things are red. I figured out red is, like, a big no-no. I'm not sure what the green and the blue is supposed to represent. This is how, like, uh, Nintendo localizations tend to, like, highlight words. Yeah. <laughs> right off the bat, we have the typical, let us have a femc, but don't make us have to choose the femc. And what a lot of people don't understand is this is easily a extra third of the game they need to make mm -hmm. like it's a good idea in the same way that ending world hunger forever is a good idea but you got to think about the okay how do we make this happen element uh like a female character doesn't just come into existence like mr nakajima-san isn't gonna sit there and type up plus female protagonist and then instantly there's a model and all the, and all the like different dialogue you would have to write for her and da 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 just magically appearing. Mm -hmm. There's also uh, if you played the FMCs around Persona 3 Portable, a lot of effort was put into just little things. Like Junpei's even more pissed that he's not the hero in the FMCs route. There's also the added issue of is your FMC going to have their own soundtrack and social link slash confidants the prop the problem with a lot of this list is that i feel like even if they got what they wanted the next could complaint would be why isn't it this but more you get what i'm yeah. saying like let's say we give them the femc and they're it's more or less the same or not the femc a femc and it's more or less the same thing as the male character the complaint is now going to be well why isn't there different social links different music different aesthetic like in persona 3 portable yeah Persona 3 Portable comes up quite a bit in this. <laughs> yeah, so my guess on the majority of the people who wrote this are the guys who pretend to have finished Persona 3 Portable, but have not actually. And like, guy who has made it to the end of Kamoshida's Palace. Like, that's who wrote this list. Yeah. <laughs> Don't shy away from ta actually tackling the themes you bring up. What the fuck does this, this mean? I, I hate this. I know exactly what this means. Um, so a lot of the time, these, like, Tumblr, like, social justice warrior type people will say, well, Persona 5 shied away from its themes, like, its themes of rebellion, which is completely nonsensical, and I genuinely have no idea what they're talking about. So you know what they're talking about, but you don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, I know what they're trying to say, but they don't know what they're saying. Yeah. Like, don't shy, like, a lot of this list just has these really weird, vague, like, suggestions. Like, one of them later on is better pacing. What the fuck does that mean? Like, you can apply that to anything ever made. Better pacing. Alright, so what I'm assuming they mean here, like, from the most surface level, because you brought up Tumblr thing, uh, you're rebelling, so why can't you, I don't know, fucking be a gay and rebel against social norms? Yeah, I see that a lot. That, I think, is the thing they're trying to apply here, is like, don't shy away from like just their imaginary bullshit that they think is some some grand social issue but here's, here's but the, the thing though yeah go ahead like persona 5 is like picking your the things you rebel against and like really making an impact with each of them you are just like very petty in rebelling for the sake of rebellion <laughs> yeah like there's a genuine purpose to what you're doing like let's take down this evil mafioso let's take down the guy who's going to control the entire country it's really, nobody in the game is oppressing you because you like penis. Yeah. Really. Yeah, we don't know if anyone in P5 likes penis or not. Yeah, f fucking, for all we know, Yusuke might be really gay. It's, he, he just doesn't, find, doesn't take the time to express he it. He doesn't find the protagonist attractive. <laughs> Alright, next up, here's another genius one. Consider an adult cast in a workplace or college setting. Which, alright, I can kind of, I, I get this. 
this happened in Persona 2 Eternal Punishment, a game that I'm sure they have not played. Oh no, I don't think they're even aware there are two Persona 2 games. The thing about that one is it was a very linear narrative. It wasn't something with a calendar mechanic and just like very, your choices, you have a lot of choices of what you can do throughout the day. Which is sort of why Japan admires high school as much as they do. Because even though high school in Japan is just like murder, it's slightly less murder than like the work in college life. <laughs> yeah, like the corporate, corporate, like big boy world of Japan is not a fun place. You're usually just a miserable, lowly, unhappy person. And that's why there's so much like high school stuff because they like high mm -hmm. school. It's just easier to sell a high school setting to high schoolers and like kids that are younger that are in high school. No kid is going to sit there and say, oh boy, I really would love to file my taxes in, the, in Persona 6 mm -hmm. today. It, they choose a high school setting for a number of reasons, and I get that it's a bit boring, but that's just because you're looking at, at the most base level of they're in high school. The settings of Persona 3, 4, and 5 are vastly different from each other. Oh, absolutely. Especially 4 from 3 and 5. Like, I'm more into the idea of college, because college sounds like, yeah, you've got more free time, you're in college, you're still young, whatever. I mean, maybe in America, but I don't know too much about the Japanese Yeah, I don't know. I, I think, yeah, I think college in Japan is more like grind, 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 kind of like a prelude to the corporate yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. Like, do you want your school life to be, like, Tartarus? <laughs> Expand the soundtrack in the game beyond selling outfits with G BGMs. This horrifies I me. I disagree slightly. I think that mm. the, this is a somewhat fair point if they just mean one extra song, and that's, uh, this is my fav one of my favorite additions from Persona 4 The Golden, a game with a lot of additions I don't like. When you sneak up on the enemy, you get a different battle theme. Multiple random encounter themes is something that I welcome entirely. Yeah, but I think what they're trying to say is these 100 plus song soundtracks are not good enough. Like, that's the implication I seem to be getting from expand the soundtrack. Yeah. Like, if we were to get two extra tracks, like one for when you get snuck up on, one for when you sneak up on the enemy, and one for like a neutral encounter theme, that's perfectly fine by me. That's what I, that's, yeah, what, that's something okay. I would love. But we can't like have every group of enemies has their own encounter theme we can't have theme of incubus theme of jack frost you can't have that like this one yeah this one's really annoying because that that poor man meguro busts his ass making these generally really good soundtracks for like every game and you're gonna sit there and say yeah like 120 songs wasn't quite enough for my palette give me about 70 more oh also persona 5 didn't have a song like a song change halfway through the game like three and four did this would be a more sensible uh complaint if it was like toned down on the reuse of certain tracks because they do have like four different versions of beneath the mask so that's like kind of understandable but don't say expand the soundtrack because that's so broad there's no way to interpret it other than m more song <laughs> costumization options such as hairstyle <laughs> i didn't notice oh. it said costumization until costumization now. <laughs> options such as hairstyle outfits etc for the protagonist so here's the thing, uh, you you in uh, Persona 3, 4, and 5, uh, you are wearing something called a uniform, and you aren't yeah. trying, and especially in Persona 5, you aren't trying to like make waves and out yourself as a delinquent by dyeing your hair or mm -hmm. styling it as a sick pompadour like Josuke. <laughs> That's something that you immediately cannot do with the high school setting, but maybe they just mean for like in dungeons and stuff. You know, maybe... Yeah, Maybe the, you go into a palace they've already and you defeat... get your, your, uh, your cognitive pompadour. <laughs> yeah, but, like, the problem is they've already defeated their own point because there's already, like, outfit DLC. Mm -hmm. So you can dress yourself up as different stuff. Mm -hmm. I Like, I guess they mean outside of, like, the Tartarus cognitive or world, whatever equivalent. maybe they want, like, clothing layers. Like, this is some kind of really big-budget AAA game that can afford such yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah, but, like, that's gonna be weird. Like, of course you you have to go to school in your uniform. What, are you gonna come back and then decide on an outfit for the rest of the day? Yeah. That's, that's like, silly to me. And it often leads to your creative character looking like creative character face man with, who looks uh -huh. completely alien to the rest of the world. Yeah, like, I think it's a, it's a cute idea, but it's... 
again, it's an idea that takes time and development. And a budget. And it's not... And, it, it, and a budget. It's only going to make your character stick out like a sore thumb in the end. Mm -hmm. Because you got to appreciate the work that goes into designing the main character of a Persona game. Better pacing for both main story and dungeons. This one is a nightmare <laughs> of, like, extremely vague criticism. Mm -hmm. Like, do you mean as in, like, space them out better or like bring them closer together better pacing is in know. like better level curve this can be taken in many different ways and you really need to be more specific about it yeah just better pacing doesn't work that that's literally the equivalent of me saying make it better like what do you mean like i i guess they're talking about like the problem is you can interpret this any fucking way you want and people have different perceptions of like good pace <laughs> Like, maybe they're talking about that whole horror stretch. Like, that pacing is kind of mm -hmm. weird. But I don't know. They could be talking about every second of this 100-hour video mm -hmm. game. When I look at better pacing for the main story and dungeons, one co common complaint I hear about the game is this, oh, I gotta wait for the story to advance. When that's really just giving you time to work on the video the rest of the video game yeah like that's coming from a lot of people that there's a lot of these especially in like the gameplay part that's basically let me not play the game part mm -hmm. of it from people that really just want to get through the story and like don't care about anything else and are only playing the gameplay because they're forced to yeah when a lot of persona is all the little side things and the and you know the journey along the way this one they put in caps lock because this is so this much is of a big very deal important. to them. I'm yeah. surprised the whole thing isn't, like, in rainbow colors. <laughs> Do not block share function on PS4! And no, spoilers is not a good excuse. Uh, I mean, I guess this is good for your YouTube channel. Yeah, like, this This is fine. I don't have a problem with this, really. I, like, that's just kind of a common sense yeah, thing. Yeah, I, I agree with this. Because it would mean that the super best friends wouldn't be making a Tokyo Mirage Sessions Let's Play right now. <laughs> like, a more intelligent criticism would be something like ease up on the uh, Atlas's restrictive, you know, like, recording, Let's Playing, whatever policies. Yeah. Like, that's less a Persona criticism and more an Atlas criticism, but yeah, this one's, like, fine. Now, here's something that isn't as fine. More diverse range of Personas. This, I don't understand. This 200 this. Plus, uh, these 200 per plus personas aren't enough. <laughs> and the, the one right below, this is basically the same thing, so we'll just lump it in there. Make personas more interesting as demons slash characters. All right. So, besides your party member personas, uh, personas are Pokemon. <laughs> They're basically. But they are Pokemon. meant to be even more expendable than that. The second you give your demon a bit more characterization, you get attached to them. And then you don't want to fuse mm -hmm. them. And then you have an actual problem. Like, Personas have just enough for you to, like, be like, yeah, this is my Persona for the fucking dungeon. And no longer than that. Like, again, it's a problem of it being so vague. I don't know what they mean. More diverse range. Do you mean, like, in terms of abilities, design, personality? Like, it's just really hard numbers? to tell. Do you mean numerically? <laughs> yeah, numerically, just more? Like, 200 isn't enough for you? Why aren't there as many Personas as there are Pokemon? Yeah. I, I think we can we can solve both of these in one thing by saying play a Shin, real Shin Megami Tensei game. Like, actually. Make Personas more interesting as demon slash characters. This, this is what I was trying to say. By, God. like, the second you add more to them, they become harder to fuse and just say, you will not be missed. Yeah, I think that they're expect like this is another I don't understand game design thing. They probably expect each demon or persona rather to have like an intricate fifteen day long quest you can undertake with them, where you learn about them as a life form and become friends or something. But they're just something that are is meant to be fused away. I can understand yeah. maybe like fleshing out your party members' personas a bit. That would be like just neat, yeah. having a scene with your party members where they talk about why they think their persona is what it is. That'd be kind of that'd be mm -hmm. kind of neato. Yeah, that would be. But like personas aren't gonna just decide to talk to you outside of their awakening. Give the the last party member more breathing room and time to develop after introducing them. I'm like, I love this sentence. Unlike Haru in Persona Five, Goro. <coughs> yeah. Like in the context of Haru, yeah, I'll agree with you. 
that's fine. I think one way you could almost fix this is by introducing two characters in a single dungeon. Like this could have helped. This could have been done in maybe Futaba's palace or something. Uh, but that's the the most I can really say about that. You can make it so that way you recruit the party members earlier and then thus have more time to develop them in, after introducing them. The game that I feel did party member like recruitment in terms of like pacing was Persona 3. Because mm -hmm. you got the full party at the midway point of the game. Yeah. And that was a smart... Like movie. Persona 4 does good with that too because Naoto is throughout the game pretty much through all yeah. of it. And then when she joins at the end, you still have a pretty good understanding of who she is, like, as a yeah. human. You know? Horror was, is the only real exception to this rule. Like, we got that scene of her getting into a car. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. This almost, almost a fair point if you're only, if you're looking yeah. at Persona 5 in a vacuum. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt on this one and be like, yeah, this is a fine criticism. Add optional character slash S-Links to the game in New Game Plus. This is madness because many of them will never experience talking to these characters. Yeah. The people that wrote these suggestions. Yeah. Like a lot of other people also won't experience talking to these characters. Like a lot of people are all like, all right, I finished this 100 plus hour game. I think I'm going to step away for for a bit, you know, come back in a year maybe. Right. Like that's what I do. I have a very difficult time replaying Persona games because like I like that first in quick experience. Succession, at least. Yeah, like in succession, like it took me about a year to cool off on Persona 3 before I played mm -hmm. it again. And I guess I get why like you want a reason to start that new game. I don't think that one extra social link is going to be enough. Well, they say add optional characters uh, with an S, as in, like, more than one. Yeah, just, just add, like, fucking the Aeon and Hunger only available in New Game Plus. <laughs> that sounds like madness to then me. People won't, have, people won't have anything to bitch about when they're like, well, which character's gonna be the Aeon now, you guys? More believable and mature villains with relatable motivations. Absolute nonsense. Yeah, because, like, I... I find it impossible to relate to fucking Adachi. <laughs> Even if you don't, like, relate to them, you can at least empathize with them in some way, shape, or form, or see how fucking unlikable they are. And Persona 5 did a really great job at making very unlikable people, which made some for yeah. some very like well received in terms of like man we all hated this guy and that was great mm -hmm. they really did a good job at writing kamoshida and you wouldn't say you relate to kamoshida oh i, I mean know. we all want to fuck on but that's the extent yeah. of it i i cannot interpret this as anything except i did not play the game but i'm gonna pretend like my friend who whose friend played persona 5 said that the the car the villains are all shitty and they're all jokes, mm -hmm. which is ridiculous. Like, like the only one, the only one who was a joke was Kanashiro. Like and even then, he's still an evil asshole guy who really has no reason to not be in jail. Mm -hmm. More believable and mature villains, like that's nonsense. Like Adachi is one of my favorite villains just because he's that guy who's the everyman, who's like, life sucks. Fucking, what's the point in trying? Uh, you kids with your bullshit friendship, you're just playing a stupid mm -hmm. game. That part of him is, like, relatable, but the rest of him is... You gotta do something to make them villains. And as soon as that, they stop being as relatable. Yeah, and, like, the idea that the Persona 5 villains aren't mature is really, really mm -hmm. dumb. Like, Kamoshida abuses his students and, like, sexually abuses Shiho and makes her try to kill herself. That's not quite some Teletubby yeah. shit, my friend. And, like, a lot of what people praise the Kamashita part of the game for was being very believable mm -hmm. in its tone and writing. Yeah, like, that's the thing that's freaky about a lot of them is, like, with Kamashita and uh, Madarame and a couple other of, other of them, yep. is that there's that freaky element of, oh, God, that guy could be in my life in some way, shape, mm -hmm. or form. And I just don't The know. only ones who weren't believable were Kanashiro and Shido. Yeah, Shido just because his grasp on the world is so ridiculous. Yeah. If they toned down his grasp on the world, then you would be just as believable and mature, mature as everyone else. Better treatment of LGBTQ characters. Oh, here's the Don't make offensive jokes about the LGBTQ community. They treat 
like LGBTQ characters with respect when they like deserve it. <laughs> like with June and if you want to if you want to call him that kanji. The thing is, I feel like those people that are like more representation will never be satisfied because we have like Kanji and Naoto. Neither of them are like I think Kanji's bisexual. You may disagree with me. Naoto is not trans, but they're both they both kind of tackle that issue of like gender and self-identity. And here's the funny incredible thing about both of those characters that completely goes over people's heads is that the message about both of them was that their gender and their sexuality didn't matter. Mm -hmm. And that they were they were people first mm -hmm. and possibly gay second. Yeah. Like that that's something that I just found like really good in terms of writing. Then we get a lot of people who just want want like Kanji to come out or something. That would go against the whole point. <laughs> like I know what they mean by better treatment. Better treatment is more emphasis on gay characters. That or like better treatment is in don't have those two fucking fucking gay dudes that hit on Ryuji and stuff. Like, yeah, I didn't I find that. those That's... parts of the game too funny. Like, yeah, it's not funny, but I'm not sitting there saying, oh god, I gotta call the police. Yeah, I, this, I, just, you know? I just groaned and moved on. Yeah. Like, this wasn't a focal point of the game. <laughs> More unique ways to gain personas. Maybe an evolved negotiation. I can't stand that second sentence because it's like, okay, we finally get a negotiation system that's pretty on par with like the rest of the Megami Tensei stuff. And you're gonna say evolve it? How? But that's the extent of it, I guess. Yeah, like, more unique ways to get game personas. I don't know what they mean by this. Like, <laughs> are we gonna win them from a gashapon? I think that these this complaint comes from people who could not get behind the fusion system and want to circumvent that, and the Megami Tensei series is just not for them in that sense. Yeah, like... I retweeted something that Reversal Sun said. It was about the uh, more diverse range of personas make personas more interesting as demons or characters. And I found it fucking hilarious. She said, I'm sorry you're so bad at fusing. Mo like, move mm -hmm. on. So, like, I get a lot of those, I don't know what I'm doing. Then, through some weird association, they're going to be like, make it a better system. Because I was too dumb to figure this out. The one thing that I could find as a band-aid issue for all these I'm bad at fusing issues is making the protagonist starting persona last longer in terms of gameplay. Mm. This does come with the cost of like making fusing unrewarding in the early game. Like make it so that way they would be like a Jigen in Fire Emblem. Your starting persona. They fall off at the midpoint and while you could technically still use it, you would definitely see yourself falling behind the rest of your party if you kept using that starting persona. A better localization overall. No more awkwardly structured sense and weird use of honorifics in the dub. It's a Japanese setting. <laughs> I think it would be very weird to say, uh, like, Mr. Tadakishi or something like that. Yeah. Like that's you end up with that kind of thing. And while some people can get behind that, it's it's become part of Persona's charm at this point. Yeah, like I'm just used to it from like Japanese stuff, translations being like, oh da 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 chan yeah. or whatever. So I guess it's just kinda down to personal preference. I kinda mm -hmm. like it, even though I can understand why some people would be like, Yeah, this is like why are you yeah. doing this? It would screw with the consistency with the series at this point. It's not something that's going to happen. Yeah, then you would have, like, a cult of people. Like, every time you try to fix something in Persona, there's another crew that's like, don't fucking mm -hmm. do that. Like, then people will start missing the honorifics. Mm -hmm. Tone down the excessive hand-holding and forced to sleep days. I mean, yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's fine. Like, the, the irony of it is that they say tone down the excessive hand-holding, and then the gameplay part is, like, 90% make it easier yeah. so i don't know what they really they want. want a shorter tutorial i guess <laughs> like i think there's one later that's like make a skippable tutorial which i guess like yeah that's fine give the players more breathing room during the final stages of the game you gotta make the final areas of the game more tense in order to make it feel like the final stage of the game <laughs> while persona 5 did have a lot of back-to-back -back dungeons you didn't have to go through them all in like you could have paced yourself with them yeah like that's the magnificent and beautiful thing about persona is that if you don't feel like going to that dungeon today you don't have to yeah you can go to like your grind spot you could hang out with mishima there's a lot of things you can do post game extra contents that you can play after the last boss yeah, you know, we've just destroyed uh, Yaldabaoth, and but now a new Mementos has popped up and it will never go away. Yeah, or, and also, uh, also after your character moves back to where... 
character they came from. Yeah, like, I don't think they understand that Persona is, like, a point A to point B story. It's not like Skyrim. Like, there's... After it's done, it's done, fool. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I kind of like the idea of, like, before the last boss, having more stuff that you can do. Like, that's kind of neat. But... What do you mean, play after the last boss? The game has ended. Maybe they want, like, an extra, like, button in the main menu after you beat the game that says, uh, like, ENDLESS MOMENTOS! <laughs> <laughs> and you can use Goro in ENDLESS MOMENTOS. Oh, man. Sick. I kind of like ENDLESS MOMENTOS, now that I say it out loud. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell Atlas. They'll, they'll make that DLC. This one's fine. Keep party members relevant to the story after respective arc all the way to the end. Yeah, the wor the game I feel did the worst job at this was Persona 4, where Yukiko and Kanji and Chie do absolutely nothing. Like, yeah, they, like the extent of their contributions to the story after like their little arc is saying something so incredibly stupid that it makes the smart characters have a re revelation. <laughs> Like, yeah, this one's fine. Yeah. I don't have any problem with this, really. It's just kind of an issue of, like, thinking of really important things that everybody can do. Like, I liked what they did in Persona 5 in the final dungeon. Because everybody gets their own little, I am useful in this situation moment. The Futabas was definitely a joke. <laughs> yeah. Cut the repetitive dialogues. Persona 5 was really bad with this. An example would be cool. I, I guess it's hard to figure out what they're talking like. I didn't feel like Persona 5 had like a big problem where they're saying the same shit over and over and over. Yeah, a lot of characters had multiple lines of dialogue for doing specific things. Mm -hmm. And in the cases where they didn't, well, it wasn't a scenario that was happening constantly. Uh, just like mix up your party and you won't get like too bugged by repeating dialogue. Like I, I can't tell if they're talking about like in-game kind of shit or like cutscene stuff. Because it's worded so vaguely. I can't think of any cutscene things. Yeah, like, I can't either, but you can you can never tell with this list. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they just wanted less scenes of Ryuji and Morgana arguing. Tone down on having pervert party members. I take offense to this. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, got it. Get rid of Ryuji. And only him. And, like, Morgana to some extent, even though that's more just kind of funny, because he's, like, a cat creature. And he's only interested in on. Like, you can't do this without making characters weird and sexless. <laughs> like, I'm not saying they need to be boning constantly. That That's that's for my games <laughs> that yeah. I like. But, like, they need to have, like, show interest in the opposite sex sometimes, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, some characters just aren't into that. Like, Yusuke is not going to be the type to be like, damn, baby. Um, but, like, that's just who Ryuji is. Yeah. Like, yeah, the magician, well, Ryuji's a chariot, but, like, the best friend guy having kind of a perverted side. That's just, like, a part of Persona. Yeah, and a lot of people like those characters. I like the way Persona 5 handled it, because, like, Ryuji was obviously attracted to On, like, the other members of the Phantom Thieves. And the the other Phantom Thieves are like, yeah, he's a straight male. Yeah. <laughs> like, like... Like, they didn't milk it for jokes. They didn't point it out like Persona 4 did. <laughs> Experiment with new elements, such as roguelike features in randomly generated side dungeons. Oh, hey, Tartarus. How's it going <laughs> yeah, over there? What do they mean by this? Roguelike features. Have you been hanging out with Mementos there, Tartarus? <laughs> oh, you have. Have you? Oh. <laughs> like, so you're saying I'm going to be walking around in Mementos and I'm going to find, like... Fucking brimstone from the binding of Isaac. Like, I really don't know what they mean by this. We already have mementos in Tartarus. Yeah, those are randomly generated. Like, roguelike features. I cannot comprehend what they want in there. I guess they want, like, a big treasure chest each floor. But there's not enough equipment in the game for that. More substantial inter-party relationships, like Persona 3 Portable. You know, you didn't have this to say one... Portable. Yeah, this one infuriates me, especially because it says P3P, and that's what I know a lot of this is. It's just like that that Persona 3 Portable, the big Persona 3 Portable fan who never actually finished the thing. Yeah, because that was a thing in, uh, you know, Persona 3. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you ever heard of it. It was originally a PlayStation 2 game! <laughs> a shortcut option with its own rewards and challenges for dungeons. Let me play the game less. <laughs> yeah, that's what that basically, a shortcut option. This sentence is I, really strange. I, I, don't, like, I don't know what they you, mean. What do you want? Like, for there to be, like, an invisible... 
wall in Bowser's castle that you can drive through, and there's a there's an item box in there and a boost panel. <laughs> That's not what uh, the Persona series needs. Like that would make more sense if it was like alternating paths, but then that would require its own set of problems. Yeah, like that would make more sense rather than a shortcut. Yeah, like maybe it's just for like uh, New Game Plus. Uh, I could see making more parts of the game like battle locked or something like blocking off your path with a really strong enemy instead of a wall a yeah. puzzle wall i could see that being an option then you end up with a lot of people stupidly throwing themselves at the level 99 enemy an alternative way to access s links that are locked behind social stats this i know what this is this is magical code for i do not want to increase my stats this is another one of those I do not understand game development things. More meaningful player choices that result in branching storylines with their own endings! This is something that you can only put at the end of the game. Otherwise, you are making actually two separate games. Yeah, or more. I, I assume they want, like, like a fucking Yoko Taro game situation where it's like, yeah, 26 endings, who cares? Ugh. We aren't making Rants 10 here. <laughs> Yeah. The more th Good the God. more branching paths you add to your story, the either less focus each route gets. Like some endings would just be like fucking three dungeons long. Or if you want it to like each ending to feel like its own game, which I'm guessing they do, you're making a bunch of different games. Yeah, this is madman shit. Like it took them long enough to make a simple like point A to point B if you exclude all the like you fucked up endings. <laughs> but you're gonna sit there and be like, all right, well Persona 5, that was fine, but now I need six different, like, definitive ending endings. <laughs> and more meaningful player choices. I don't see where these meaningful player choices could come up. I don't know. Like I'm sure they're thinking, okay, Atlas, well you should have made it so that we could kill Kamoshida. And the story would have been changed, like, going forward from there. Yeah, or, like, uh, give us the option to just take Goro's heart at some point. <laughs> That's something that I can't imagine happening, especially in Persona. It makes mm -hmm. me think they won an SMT game, but I don't think they won an SMT game. No, they don't know what that is. An option to skip dungeons in New Game Plus. <laughs> oh, man. How I'm surprised it's not just an option to skip dungeons. How, how would you make this work from a narrative standpoint? You don't. You do not. Like, there has to be some sort of... Like, at most, like, this makes sense in, like, Persona 5 and Persona 5 alone because you're just telling it to say. And you just get an option before, like, each part of the game. And yeah, say, explain thoroughly, go through it kind of quick. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, going forward, that's not Persona 6. Like, Flowey the Flower is going to have to show up and be like, are, are you interested in this dungeon? Because if not, we can, just, we can just go, dude. <laughs> like... That's... that is stupid. <laughs> yeah, that's really dumb. Yeah, even, let's make it less of a game. Even in, like, other games that have New Game Plus, this has never been a feature. This isn't a mm -hmm. thing in Chrono Trigger. <laughs> Can you imagine just for a second if, like, the the back of the box for a Shin Megami Tensei game, one of the features was an option to skip dungeons? That's the most backwards thing for this series that has thrived on being the Big Dick Challenge. RPG. Yeah. Dude, Etrian Odyssey, guest starring skippable dungeons? Oh, hell yeah! Dark Souls! Skip edition. <laughs> and then this one's like, okay, categorize the item menu into different sections for better navigation. Like, yeah, that's fine. Make the MC more expressive. Either have a voiced oh, no. MC with their own personality, or keep the silent MC, but make the dialogue choices much more meaningful. Oh God! I agree. I would like it if the if the Persona series had Rance as a protagonist. <laughs> but yeah, that's like, not. I hate these fucking suggestions that are either like do the same thing but better, or do something entirely different. Like have the MC be voiced with their own personality. Then he's not even your character anymore. Then it's harder to justify having social links as they are now. Like then you just have talking to this character and having it advance at a set rate, and that's not exactly the same game and then i know the choices are much more meaningful theme that goes right back into the one on the top like the branching storylines yeah like they just want to turn this into some impossible choose your own adventure 100 hour each playthrough type thing mm -hmm. it's not something that the persona series can believably do in its current yeah. format 
or budget or company. <laughs> yeah, like maybe in a hundred years we'll be able to do that. Yeah, a shorter tutorial or at least a partially optional one. Now, this sounds good on paper, but here's the thing. A lot of Persona tutorials are woven into the story to an yeah. extent. Your character awakening their Persona, that's part of the tutorial. You learning the guns work in Persona 5, part of the tutorial. Like, they really want... What I'm guessing they want is a skippable prologue. And that's... But that, that, that creates story. its own problems. Yeah. <laughs> that's the prologue. Make dungeon areas wider or running controls tighter. Yeah, I'll agree with you. Like, I think the camera is a bigger problem. Because I had to set the camera to the fastest speed. Because I don't think the thing goes quick enough. I wasn't usually running around in dungeons. I was using that fucking press X to fast snack button yeah. most of the time. I also see uh, a toggle option for certain abilities gained by Esla. When would you want to turn off any of those abilities? Why would, yeah, why would you want to turn off like a permanent passive good benefit? You know, I, I want the alert to go faster. Why did I talk to Oya? <laughs> yeah, like, if you're doing some kind of challenge run, I guess, but that doesn't even make sense, because then you can just not talk to the social link people. Yeah. <laughs> what backwards fucking challenge run are you doing where it's it's 100% social link, but with none of the benefits? <laughs> Story-based character development and ultimate personas like in P3. No. This was written by an intelligent human, because it says like Persona 3 and not like Persona 3 Portable. And it's a good idea. <laughs> this is genu genuinely just a good idea that I like a lot, that I would like to see them do, but they probably won't. Yeah. Experiment with a game structure that's not so tied to the calendar. Throw away all your identity. Yeah. Go back to the, like, Persona 1 and 2 style that none of them have ever played. Do X by Y date is getting a tad stale. I mean, they do they do it X by Y date so that way you can do your confidants and social links. Yeah, like, I don't know what they mean by experiment with a calendar, which is like a binary fucking numerical thing. <laughs> like, I really don't understand what Madman system they're trying to invent here. Maybe they want it to be like turns in Sengoku Rants, and sometimes you get more time. There's a lot of this put the carriage be before the horse kind of mentality of designing of like, yeah, this is a good idea. And they never stop to think, but how are we going to implement it? Th th that isn't a good idea. That's like just a prompt. More unique dungeon dialogues. Did, did they see all the different mementos lines? There's a lot yeah, of them. Yeah, there's hundreds of them. And they're all really fun. Yeah, they're enjoyable. Confidants and S-Links. Oh god, what am I going to see here? Okay, this this has some dumb shit. More consequences for your social link choices that would affect the main story as well as other S-Links. Alright, this is the same bullshit as the last one, except now we're gonna add another layer of crap onto it. Yeah, it's something that sounds good in theory, and I could see them, like, maybe... Maybe in certain key situations, like, just have... If Social Link is at this rank, this character will say this. Yeah, I like that idea, but I know what they're trying to go for is, like, you maxed out Makoto, now the story changes. Yeah. That kind of shit. That's out of that's out of the question yeah and more consequences for your social link choices i don't really know what they mean by this easier more social links that are capable of reversing maybe more activities to do with your social links for instance having the ability to invite more than one person to go to a movie with you then you need to write scenes for every combination of characters yeah like then if you say like, at least two people with you, then you gotta write, like, them multiplied by everybody. Yeah, then it's not like... Write them scenes. Then you need to, like, think of, all right, how does Mishima interact with EY? Or how does uh, Takemi interact with Ryuji? <laughs> That's a nightmare. <laughs> like, I like the idea of having more activities to do with your social links. Yeah, like, if I could go, like, to, the, okay if I could go to, like, the fucking batting cage with EY, that'd be pretty cool. Like, anything that doesn't involve, like, combining S-Links, because that's an actual nightmare for writing. Yeah, like, again, another neat idea from somebody that doesn't understand, like, budget and development. Yeah. Expand on the activities that you can do inside and outside of school. Clubs, part-time jobs, etc. Said activities could have their own unique minigames akin to the Yakuza series. Perfectly understandable. That's what I kind of got when I was looking at, like... The Persona 5 trailers and seeing the fucking baseball and mm -hmm. hearing about Gunabout and there being mini games in the game. I could see them like throwing a bit more of those into the game. That'd yeah, be like that's fine. fine. 
like things on the level of the Yakuza series, I can't see them doing. Mm-hmm. But like more stuff like baseball or fishing, yeah. Real repercussions for dating multiple characters at once and getting caught, rather than just a silly Valentine's Day scene. Oh yeah, silly like that fucking Persona 4 Golden scene. Oh, that that scene is miserable. Oh yeah, that 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 goofy scene that crushes your heart. Yeah, you know that there was a laugh track. <laughs> And, like, real repercussions. Like, what are they going to do? Kill you in real life? <laughs> uh, like... <laughs> I could see them bringing back, like, reversals. Yeah. But, like, the existence of the friend zone has made that kind of pointless. Mm-hmm. Like, you're asking for... You're asking for something to happen at that point. Yeah, like, in Persona 3, if there... There's no, like, Valentine's Day catastrophe. Yeah. If uh, you're dating multiple girls because you get to choose one. But now that you can say we're just friends and pick and choose, it's really up to your character and your own sense of like, what do I want to do here? Yeah. Optional romance S links. Oh, boy. S that have the same gender as the MC. S plural. More than one, which is secret code for let me fuck all of them. Yeah. Because everyone is bisexual. It's Making true, everybody. Everyone yeah. meaningless. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, come on, Persona 5, you you cowardly game that doesn't tackle issues like, like did, anal sex. Did, did like, romance in fucking Mass Effect 3 or, like, Saints Row 4, the Saints Row 4 is, like, making fun of everyone being bisexual. Is that what you <laughs> want? <laughs> people like that have this weird conflict in their heads of, like, are gay people just ordinary people? They're like, yeah, whatever, they're gay, who cares? Or is it a big deal that they're gay? Mm-hmm. Like, I like it when it's just who cares, whatever. Like, most Western RPGs don't handle gay characters very well, but Fallout New Vegas has two gay companions <laughs> that mention it offhandedly just a couple of times. And it is, like, a tertiary part of who they are as a person. Mm-hmm. It, it's, like, it's not a big deal. They're just gay. Who cares? Mm-hmm. I think that one is fine if they don't do it every game. Yeah. Like once every once every once in a while, fine. Like if in Persona 6 we got a gay character and we didn't get one until like Persona 9, I'd be perf- that'd be perfectly fine by me. One yeah, like then the shit that they'll say is but Jun and Tatsuya from Persona 2 and I'm perfectly fine with them because they didn't make it a point to just have a gay character each game as if they're checking out something on the list which marginalizes gay characters to just a check mark that's the shit i hate like that's why i like kanji and naoto a lot just because their internal struggle with like their sexuality and like their gender to some extent that's just like a part of who they are that's not their only character trait mm-hmm. reduce the number of wrestlings that advance automatically with no player input yes yeah that's fine yes this is just a good idea yes that they're the worst s links <laughs> they're generally not good i don't know why persona 5 need two of them i mean neither of them are even akira ren mamma mia no there's there's three of four of them yeah allow s links to intertwine with each other oh no resulting in unique relationships between s link characters Oh, you know, okay, so now now every character has an S-Link with every other character, too. You know, I, I really want uh, want that gay Mishima to, to just, like, have a just friends relationship with Takemi while, while, uh, while Takemi also, uh, she's, she's fucking Kawakami on the side. <laughs> I, I think what they want is they want, like, a Fire Emblem type system where it's like you get to decide... Which characters are going to hang out with which? But you don't have that kind of power in Persona. Yeah, that you yeah. can get away with that in Fire Emblem because like you're actively deploying people together. Yeah. It's not like you're deploy you aren't like sitting there in your boss chair. Ryuji, I want you to talk to On all the time. Add more minor events in between larger ones to improve the pacing of the game. Oh, like Persona 4 The Golden, something that we'll have to talk about after this. I I am completely against this because I know what Atlas would do with minor events. Yeah, there there is no minor event when it comes to Atlas. It's always like some big fucking catastrophe Mm -hmm. they need to do. Better and more varied S-Links. Not every female character should be dateable. Sainijima! But I also <laughs> I also agree with that. And not yeah, all problems should be solved by MC. A lot of them solve themselves. Yeah, like 
part of why I don't like a lot of the links that are in per, like Persona 4 is there are these petty bullshit problems that just get solved by not doing anything. Like Yukiko's is just, ah, I don't want to run the inn. And then at the end, she's like, yeah, I'll just run the inn. Who cares? <laughs> like Ryuji's has the same problem where you, you just watch. Nothing is really accomplished. Mm -hmm. Like Ryuji kind of figures out the problem on his own. And it's very boring as a result because there's no you interacting with the problem. Mm -hmm. Like, you need to get involved in the problem. <laughs> yeah, otherwise, what's the point? Mm -hmm. More interactive dates. For example, the player could take their date to one of the batting cages and win a prize for them based on their score. Uh, you're putting too yeah. much of an emphasis on the dating aspect of it. I could see them doing that if, like, they were to expand on what you do with your romanced, your romance girl. Which mm -hmm. is something completely understandable, because right now, when you romance a character, you just get one extra scene with them on Christmas and one extra scene with them on Valentine's Day. Right. And that's kind of empty right now. But I can't imagine, like, the prize being that fucking amazing that it makes me want to spend time with them after I've maxed their social link out. Yeah, like, that's just part of the problem is that, like, we have no incentive to go and be like, all right, Makoto, we're going on a date today when there's, like, 15 other humans we could talk to and get benefits from them. Mm -hmm. Rework the S-Link points. Your choices should affect the nature of the relationship instead of oh, how many no. points you get towards a linear progression. Not another this. another case of, I don't understand the nature of the thing. Also, yeah. what do you mean by that? Like, I'll get them to hate me really hard. Yeah, like me, this run, I'm gonna make EY my mortal foe. And that'll get me fucking points. More in-depth side quests akin to the ones with Elizabeth and Theodore. Like, what do you mean? Bring me a persona? <laughs> I, I'm okay with these. They were like nice little kind of uh, like side quests. Like, those are okay. Yeah, like some of them were. <laughs> a lot of them are like bitch work. Yeah. Bring back the ability for the confidant to break at the S-Link depending on your actions. Yeah, especially depending on your actions. Dating two girls at once and getting caught is no longer like an active choice. Not too many people are dating multiple girls at once, unless that's the entire point in their playthrough. Mm -hmm. I could, I would appreciate that being a more challenging task. Like, really make me work for that harem scene, if you are going to make it a joke scene. Could you imagine making it, like, harder to do, and then at the end having it be as heartbreaking as Persona for the Golden? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like, all that work for nothing? Yeah. Every level of the S-Link should unlock something meaningful. This is madness. You already get the fucking Arcana experience boost. Yeah, they they mean, like, the new to Persona 5, like, functional kind of shit, and not just, yeah, you get more experience. They already struggled to come up with shit for, like, five for each Link. What the hell do you mean ten <laughs> for each Link? Listen... Oya needs to, like, all I could see that doing is, like, straddling the already, like, marginal increases for things like EY's confidant and Oya's confidant, and just, mm -hmm. like, straddling it over several lengths. And, like, just another problem is how are you going to write it so that every single time he learns something? I mean, not all of them were tied to you learning something. Yeah, but like, just the there's still got to be some kind of justification for every time I see this human being, I get more powerful. Rework the calendar system so that each activity needs their own set amount of time. I drinking coffee needs less time than studying. This is I, this is almost understandable, yeah. but you still need to have some things just take up all the time. Like, why would you hang out with someone when you could to like increase your social stats when you could do all of the little bitch tasks like? get your social stats up i could see letting me do two stat boosting things in a day that'd be yeah. kind of neat but this is not something that's just gonna happen yeah like I, I could see them making this work somehow like they cut it up into different segments of the day <laughs> more than just like day night or like at school whatever yeah but that would require a lot of fine-tuning of kind yeah. of like the pacing of it, which apparently is already a horrific problem. Mm -hmm. Make every day more meaningful by making all the stat gaining activities be viable options to gain points from. All right. Uh, that only applies to playthrough one, but oh well. <laughs> like maybe they want like all of them to give the equal amount of points. But this is a very minor complaint that I could, I can, I give a pass. Have the calendar show who you can hang out with on which days perfectly acceptable so far and have yeah, the ability fine. to schedule plans in advance i don't know i like the thinking on the fly thing 
I yeah, like I liked how in Persona Five they'll just text you and be like, "What's up? You want to do something?" Yeah. Like in Persona Three and Four, it was kind of tedious because when you got out of school, they would all walk up to you and be like, "Sup, dude?" Yeah. Have the ability to schedule plans in advance. It's not the way I would play Persona, but I could definitely see someone enjoying it. Like they would enjoy, say, Princess Maker or whatever it's called. Yeah, I like that idea. Just being able to text somebody and be like, "You want to do da 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 on Tuesday?" Yeah. And they're like, "Yeah, sure." Yeah. Yeah, like that's an okay idea. More downtime slash partying, party bonding events outside the main story. More events like P4. Oh, oh, fuck no. <laughs> Fewer events like P5. What do they even mean by this? I'll, like, tell, you what, what, I'll tell you what they mean by this. They want to have a fucking band practice. They want to. <laughs> they want to go to the beach. They want. They want to fucking go to the snowboarding trip. Oh yeah. Who, having... who cares, dude? It's just dumb, stupid bullshit. Who fucking cares? <sighs> I hate. <laughs> I'm more annoyed by the fewer events like Persona Five because to me, Persona Five didn't have enough of those. Yeah. And, like, they had the best beach event in the series so far. Like, in Persona 5, there were rarely any, let's just, as a group, kinda hang out and do stuff. Like, they did that a lot in Persona 3, where they would just kinda hang around. <laughs> like, Seas was an organization made up of people. <laughs> and, and, like, in Persona 4 and 5, I feel like they fall into that trap of, like, this is the group Yeah. kinda shit. Have a calendar show which activities will get a boost on what days. Heck, I mean, yeah, throw that that's sure, okay. fine. Design S links with the idea of developing your relationship with characters even after reaching the max level. Getting to the max level shouldn't be the end goal, but a new starting point for a deeper relationship with the S link. For what benefit? For what benefit? Yeah, I, like, I really don't get it. Like, like I the could link, see, I could the link is like, over. I could see like, oh, uh, just here's three extra events with your with your boo. <laughs> That's, yeah. that's understandable, but for what benefit? <laughs> yeah, I don't get it. I think they want, like, some really intricate, like, dating sim kind of shit going on, where it's like they feel happy and sad, depending on how often you see them mm -hmm. kinds of shit. For what benefit? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> Fuck. No more equip the right persona. <laughs> Uh, this one's kind of weird. I, I think they mean the whole like equip a persona of the right arcana kind of thing. This is just something to make the social links go by faster. And you yeah. don't need, actively need to equip it. I mean, I could see doing away with it, but it'd be kind of weird. Yeah, like I, I could take it or leave it on this one. This one's like an okay suggestion. More voice acting for S links. I mean, sure. Yeah, that's fine. This one is my least favorite out of all of them. More in-depth integration of romance akin to Persona 3 Portable. Oh my god! I know what that is! Both of these mystify me because I don't know what Persona 3 Portable has to do with it and what they mean by more in-depth integration of romance. Oh god, I know what they mean! They want Shinji doesn't die-esque integration of romance. That's what they want. That's why they said akin to P3P. Oh my god. But that would that would only affect Goro. <laughs> That's what they want. They want to get Goro. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> what an awful sentence. <laughs> More in-depth integration of romance. All right, here's here's the here's the least worst I'm guessing. Um, this one has some really mystifying stuff and also shit that's just like, I'm a fucking baby. <laughs> Combat battle system infusions. Change the current format of MC's death equals game over. Let us continue the fight as the other team, team members and revive MC. Pawn defeat, maybe instead of sending players to the last safer. It'd be a lot less frustrating if they were sent to the beginning of the current floor. Like in Persona 4 The Golden. Like, that would make sense if there weren't safe rooms in the middle of the floors. Yeah. <laughs> like, thanks, you just sent me 30 feet back from the fucking safe room. <laughs> like, I think this one's okay. Like, SMT4 has that whole thing where the demons will still fight even after you've been fucked up, and that way they can revive you. And that is frustrating, having the MC just get randomly killed. I think that there should be, like, a consequence. Like, it really hurts you when you're when the MC is dead. Maybe make it yeah. so that way it, it turns the party members to, like, auto for a bit. Streamline the fusion process. This is more proof that they hate fusing and don't know how to do it. Velvet Room is great, but players shouldn't be spending 30 minutes at a time in there. That's the 
that's what music is. <laughs> Th this is secret code for no more depth, please. Except also make all the demons extremely intricate and like have pers more personality. Rebalance the harder difficulties. Earning less money while increasing the cost of the compendium just adds needless grind to the game instead of making it challenging. I could see one way to make the hard difficulties harder without like just increasing the numbers and still increasing a number. Give all yeah. the bosses one additional action per turn. Like the great irony of this sentence is that a couple down they say add even harder difficulties. Oh man, now the boss gets three moves instead of the yeah. one action when i gave them <laughs> so yeah this is another just one of those like really vague just fix it criticisms like yeah just rebalance the harder difficulties yeah <laughs> this one is really dumb add more elements to keep the combat deep fresh and interesting listen the shin megami tensei series is not like pokemon each type does not add a level of depth because no type is inherently strong or weak to other types Adding more elements to the game would just give you two two or more additional party members who would be underdeveloped. Yeah, another thing is that just adds to like the the boring factor of let me test elements on this enemy. Yeah. Now I also need to test out damage and water damage and earth damage. That's not something I'm particularly interested in. Yeah, like having a couple more elements really isn't gonna change like it's not going to turn it immensely more deep yeah like they apparently think it will yeah that's it's not pokemon an option to have enemies scale with you oh like final fantasy 8 the game where like skyrim we're grinding felt hollow <laughs> give party member skills the protagonist can't use this will make the characters more unique and useful in combat they already like this idea. they already get like unique skills in persona for the golden and they get, yeah. like, a really strong skill at the end in Persona 5. Yeah. Plus, uh, at no point in the game does any of the pr uh, main characters' personas match the complexity of a party member persona. Like, this one's okay. It, there's nothing too wrong with it. I yeah, would appreciate characters getting unique skills again. That was a very fun part that a lot of character to uh, each character in Persona Q and Persona 4 The Golden. Uh, so this one was written by Guy, who hasn't played Persona 5. Give us the ability to manually select one or all valid skills on Inheritance when fusing. The current exit retry loop with RNG is just completely pointless and a massive waste of time. I completely agree with this. Oh, yeah, that's why they f <laughs> that's why they fixed it! <laughs> Two games ago! I completely agree with this. Oh, this is some forward thinking. He must work for Atlas. <laughs> he probably does. Add harder difficulties that keep the game challenging even after getting ultimate personas but don't forget to rebalance them yeah whatever that means getting ultimate personas never really like complete was never too much of a game changer like getting an ultimate persona isn't like getting ultima weapon in final fantasy 7 mm -hmm. you are doing constant 9999s to everything that you see like i really want to know who the person was that like played persona 5 on lunatic difficulty it was like, one more difficulty setting. This is too easy with my ultimate personas. Right, which is just, they just break the game, dude. Oh, it's like having a Gen 1 Mewtwo. Add buffs and debuffs that affect more than just raw stats. Buff status ailments to the point that a character can specialize in them and still be good against bosses and regular enemies. This is a horrifying idea. I, like, poison is impossible to balance against bosses. Yeah. Despair inherently will not work against bosses by nature of how despair works. Fucking, like, charm confusion also inherently bricked. Oh yeah, let, let me just charm Nyx. That way I'm the one getting hit by the, by the fucking Diarahan. <laughs> and I like the idea of more than just raw stats as if it's gonna affect, like, some weird, uh, and, concept and about I the character. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I cast uh, this one's buff on Makoto, and now her mood is like plus 20. I mean, I would love to see just a fucking morale, increases party member morale for <laughs> three turns. And, it, and we don't know what it does. And data miners are still trying to figure it out. <laughs> Ailments inherently cannot work on most bosses. Like, ev like sleep and paralysis alone is just a lot of free turns for you. <laughs> yeah, that just makes it like... Like, even later on, there's one that's basically just make it so that the enemy can't fight back. But we'll, we'll get to that one. Then we have optional combat challenges or areas like Monad in Persona 3. Yeah, this is okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's fine. Like, really high-level uh, grinding area. Yeah, just... Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Bring back P3 spell fusions, that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Like, they, those can break the game. Like, that's part of Persona 2's problem. It's just those fucking spell fusions are ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But I think Persona 3 struck a good balance by requiring yeah. certain personas that may not be optimal. Don't include anything like fucking Apocalypse. <laughs> uh, put fusion calculators in the game. Perfectly fine. Yeah. Show the exact okay. turn order in the side or bottom of the screen. I think you can press a button for this. I know it was a thing in Persona 4. Add a skill affinity trait akin to SNT4 Apocalypse. Also fine. Yeah, that's okay. Add abilities that give you a chance to delay enemy turns. This is something... That's the one I was talking about. about. That's... That's just like make it so the enemy can't fight back. Yeah, just if you have yeah. if you have two characters with this skill and good RNG, the the boss can't do anything. <laughs> yeah, then like uh when they make their fucking improvements for Persona 7, it's gonna be get rid of that thing we suggested that allows you to make the enemy not fight back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've reached the end of it. What did you think about this magnificent list? They clearly don't know like how persona games are designed and how they manage to make as good of an experience as they do by making it linear yeah there's a critical lack of like game development knowledge and common sense throughout it like you'll see a lot of those like these fantasy ideas for persona it's like yeah it's a fifteen thousand hours long but the pacing is perfect and i can date everybody and everybody's relationship changes with everybody else and da, 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 da. i can date everybody and they can date each other and everyone's cheating on everyone but they're being punished for it by everyone else and everybody's gay but it's not the focal point of their character but you need to know they're gay mm -hmm. those ones are bad the combat ones were fine but there's a lot of just lack of understanding there listen if you, if you want a game that's like very open and you can just have your relationships with everyone and sort of like match them yourself but there's like fire emblem there's like a sengoku rants <laughs> try artificial academy yeah try artificial it academy might be, it might be what you're after yeah artificial academy might be exactly what you're after <laughs> also every time they say persona 3 portable there's some horrifically heinous thing that's mentioned that doesn't make any sense yeah or just something that you implied from them saying persona 3 portable yeah more in-depth integration of romance the fuck does that mean <laughs>